Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you've joined us this morning. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Now, I want to give a special right handshake, high five, or fist bump to all of our new kindergartners. We are so happy to welcome you into Super Kids, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you and getting to know you. Also, I'm super excited for all of our sixth graders who are going to get to go to Wake now. I hope you have a great time in Wake, and Matt is awesome. So today in our story, we are learning all about Israel's first king. Now, I'm sure you've all thought about some things that you would do if you were king. And I asked my boys to tell us some things that they would do. So take a listen. If I was king, I would make everyone give me all the video games in the world. If I was king, I'd cancel school forever. If I was king, I would make my birthday a national holiday. If I was king, I would make the world candy day. So thankfully, nobody in my family is king of the world. And today we're talking about how no person is actually worthy to be king except God himself. In the first two stories of Samuel, we see what makes God worthy to be king. First, we talked about how God loves us, how he hears our prayers, how he cares for us. He is personal. He wants to know us. He wants us to know and love him. Last week, we talked about how God is holy, how there is no darkness in God. There is, he is all light. There is no sin in him. He cannot be in the presence of sin. So it is God's total perfect love and his total perfect justice or holiness that makes God alone worthy to be king. Now, the Israelites were never supposed to have an earthly king. They were supposed to follow God as their king. But they looked around at the other nations and they said, we want a king like all these other nations have a king. And I'm going to read to you from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 8, starting in verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Now then, listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So God says, my people have rejected me as king. I'm going to warn them that an earthly king is not going to be great. And then they're going to see. So that is the story we're going to hear in our Gospel Project video. So check it out. Samuel was a judge over Israel. At this time, Israel had no king. But the leaders of Israel said, we want a king like the nations around us. Samuel wasn't sure how to respond, so he prayed to God. God said, give them what they want, but warn them what it will be like to have an earthly king. A king could make their sons serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for him. Or he could take away their fields and servants. But the Israelites didn't care. Give us a king, they said. God brought to Samuel a man named Saul. You will be king, Samuel said. Saul was surprised. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. 
Samuel anointed Saul, and the Spirit of God was with Saul. When the time came for Samuel to introduce the Israelites to their new king, no one could find Saul. God said, there he is among the supplies. Oh no! The people ran to Saul. Long live the king, they said. The Israelites thought Saul would be a good king, but Saul did not obey God. One day, Saul took an army to fight the Philistines, but the Philistines had more chariots, more horses, and more soldiers. Saul wanted to ask God for help. Maybe if he made an offering to God, they would win the battle. There was one problem. Only the priests, like Samuel, were allowed to give offerings to God. Saul waited, but Samuel did not come. Saul's soldiers started to leave, so Saul decided to make an offering to God himself. Then Samuel arrived. You have disobeyed God, Samuel said. You will not be king much longer. God is going to find someone obedient to be king. Sometime later, the Israelites won a battle against the Amalekites. God wanted Saul to destroy everything, but Saul only destroyed the things he didn't want. God told Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king because he does not obey me. Samuel confronted Saul. I did obey God, Saul argued. I only saved the best animals to sacrifice to the Lord. Samuel asked, does God care more about obedience or sacrifices? You rejected his instruction. So God has rejected you as king. Saul admitted his sin and asked for forgiveness. Samuel said, God has taken away your kingship today and he will make someone else king. God intended for a heavenly king to rule over Israel, but the Israelites did not trust God's plan and wanted a king like the nations around them. God gave them a king, but Saul did not obey God. God had a plan to send his son, Jesus. King Jesus trusted and obeyed God perfectly and died so sinners could be forgiven and accepted. So the Israelites got what they asked for, they got their king, and that king was Saul. And Saul was just a man, like every other man, he was sinful and fallen, and he could not be a perfect king. So as Christians, we need to remember that God alone is worthy to be king of our lives, and we are supposed to follow our earthly leaders, we are to respect them and show them love and pray for them. But we need to remember that we follow Jesus first as our King. I want to read to you from the New Testament. This is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So God showed us that he is worthy of being king when he came down, when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. The cross shows us the perfect love of God and the perfect holiness of God. And this is what makes God worthy to be our king of our lives forever. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. We acknowledge you as king. Help us to follow you only and always. I pray for all the kids. I pray that they know how much you love them and how much you want them to talk to you and just be with them wherever they are. Give them encouragement and strength throughout this week. We love you, God, and in your name we pray. Amen. 
So I'm so glad you are with us today. We will not have any Zoom meetings for the month of August, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.